Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and hello if you are new. So first of all, I just want to say sorry for not really uploading anything the last week, I think it was. I have had COVID um, pretty much since last Friday. It's not completely kicked my ass, but it's been a little bit difficult. But um, I'm kind of pretty much over it now, to be fair. We've had like our fair, of, fair share of bad luck, I think, for the next sort of <laughs> while. Um, I got really ill, missed unto others. Um, and then we also had our trip to Berlin, which was cancelled, which was really great. Um, and then both my wife and I got COVID. So hopefully things are looking up. Um, but with that in mind, I'm going to be talking about this week's review, which is none other than Monuments' brand new album, In Stasis. So first and foremost, I think it's important to know where this kind of album sits in Monuments' like, history, I guess. So this is the fourth full length. But it's quite significant in the fact that it's the first record to not feature longtime guitarist Ollie, but it is also the first to feature previous drummer Mike Malian, and it is also <laughs> the first to feature their brand new singer Andy Cizek. I think I've said that right. I've known the Monuments guys for quite a long time. I used to work with them, you know, over at Century Media. They're absolutely lovely, lovely people. This is genuinely one of the strongest iterations of the band and the In Stasis is a serious statement of intent for their return to form. Also, can we just have a moment? The fact that every single Monuments album has to end with is. We've had Gnosis, we've had Instasis, we've had Phrenosis, we've had the Emanuensis. <laughs> So I have to start off with the vocals. These are without a doubt some of the strongest vocals that Monuments have had in quite some time. I think that Andy really brings his own personality to the mix, but also has that signature kind of really powerful sound in Monuments. You know, I think Chris Barreto's vocal performance throughout the years is pretty tough to, you know, live up to. So those are some big shoes. But I remember the first time listening to Cardinal Red and I was absolutely blown away. And the first time round in the chorus, I was like, oh, it'd be really cool if they go higher here. But then they went lower. And I'm and I was like, oh, oh, right, okay. Well, I'll just keep listening to the song. Listen, 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 listen. And then it got to the second chorus, which was even more powerful. And they did that key change. And I was just like, oh, that's exactly what you needed. And I also think the fact that they brought it down before bringing it up made that kind of dynamic so much more powerful when it did actually hit for that final section. But it has to be said, I think that the choruses on this album are very, very strong. And I also think that there's kind of that similar sci-fi atmosphere that is often synonymous with this kind of progressive metal, um, particularly on OP8 and no one will teach you. Uh, I think that it's it, it kind of sets the scene nicely, but it definitely brought me back to that era of like Gnosis when Tesseract released one, all of that sort of stuff. And it, I guess in a way, maybe I'm a little bit rose tinted glasses here, but I really liked the nostalgic effect of it, but it also sounds quite modern. So I would say the biggest problem I had with their previous album, Phronesis, was that it just didn't quite click it you know it didn't have that sense of memorability on in stasis the songwriting has been tightened up massively and i think that's a huge reason why i like this album so much more and i've actually really come back to it a fair amount i also think this is some of the band's heaviest material in quite some time you've got lavos and collapse which i think might be one of the heaviest songs ever which is just like straight up you know like the the riff particularly in lavos i think is very sort of thrash oriented, it's quite attacking. But then you've also got that kind of signature monuments kind of groove, you know, going on, which is on uh, False Providence. Yeah. 
And then you've also got The Sumerian, which is an eight minute track, which ends the album. Not to mention there are some really interesting use of guest spots. We've got Nima Ascari on one of the tracks, Spencer Satello of Periphery on there as well, and even Mick Gordon, who is the man behind, you know, the Doom, um, Doom soundtrack and sound effects and things like that, uh, who also collaborated with um, Premium Horizon on Parasite Eve. Really, this is a great return to form for Monuments. It's well paced, it's got a lot of variety on it, and everyone is playing to the best of their ability. So, did you enjoy this review? I hope that you learn a little bit more about Monuments and their brand new album in Stasis. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. So I will be reviewing Undeath's brand new album, It's Time to Rise from the Grave, next week. Uh, I have also just interviewed the guys, which is available if you check in my interviews tab. So let me know what you think, and I will see you guys very, very soon.